Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of a RuneScape Discussion. Today we are going to be discussing the future of the Fremenic series. Joining me today, I have Avernic. Avernic. Welcome, Avernic. And uh, yeah, so with the recent update of returning Hattie's Skull, Fenrir, and Ear, uh, we got to thinking about where the Fremenic series is going to be going next. Uh, Avernic pitched out this idea to us, so, we, you know, we thought it was a good idea. For once. Yeah, I know. We're actually taking advice. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> um, the Fremenic series kind of sits in a weird place right now. Um, originally, you know, if you remember back in the day, it had kind of many different branching points from, like, the Lunar Isle and uh, Throne of Miscellanea, Mountain Daughter, uh, the horror Dagonauts. from the deep stuff yep. with the Dagonauts, and it kind of all like culminated together in Glorious Memories and Blood Runs Deep, and then we mm -hmm. kind of just are left in limbo right now with the Fremenic. We have some indication that there's going to be future story with it, but we're kind of, you know, waiting on that. Mm. Right. Uh, there's there's still in this odd place of they're not really coming together as a people yet uh, between the Lunar and the, the others. Um, even though there was some reconciliation and glorious memories with everyone but the Lunar people, um, which is something we're waiting on. Then we have these other threads being introduced sparingly with uh, things like Heroes Welcome and this event uh, in particular uh, with between like the Valkyrie and the afterlife and all that. There was even foreshadowing of Blood Runs Deep about um, future quests where the, the end of all things is coming. So we're still waiting to see like where that even starts to start going. Um, if it starts to start going anywhere, I think it's a miracle we got the, the Heroes Welcome in the first place as a Fremnic quest. I'm not sure uh, why they, they landed at that, but I'm glad they did. Yeah, um, the big, bigness, uh, biggest signal that we have right now that more is coming would be from the Wolves. So uh, Hattie and Skull were originally released, and they kind of had this dialogue along with Ear about how these wolves come in certain part of the seasons and how they signal the end of all things and all this stuff. And then last year, we had Fenrir added. And it gave Ear some interesting dialogue where she says, Now with the arrival of Fenrir, we, is, we are afraid that the end of all things is close. What does Fenrir have to do with it specifically? That's an odd point to throw in there. Right. Um, and taking most of what the Fremnic believe is folklore, uh, first of all, this makes me think I want to hear that story of like where they're getting that that line from, or or, or even what their end of all things is, because uh, we're not sure what they consider to be the end of the world. It could be the Elder Gods. It could be something completely different. Uh, we had Tuska, and that could have been the end of the world, end of all things, uh, but it wasn't for them clearly. Uh, so is it something we don't know about? Is it something we do? These are more questions we want no answers for. Yeah, when Ear talks about the end of the, all, all things, she mentions stuff about gods fighting gods, which I kind of think is something they threw in there to be like, oh, it's a sixth age reference. But right. that's yeah, not really something we've had. I feel like this is more of an acknowledgement of like what happened back in the third age. Mm -hmm. And they think mm -hmm. if it happens again, it will probably end the world. Right, so is this like a, a, an actual prophecy, or is it a fear? That's another thing. Um, there's just so many ways this could go. And I think it deserves m that more than one quest to like get into these different aspects of what this could be. And this is leading up to this big event. Um, just as foreshadowed over the past seven years this event has gone on. Yeah, seven years since we had Haiti for the first time. That's uh, that's scary. I feel old. I feel like every time we talk about how long it's been since an update, we feel old. Yeah. <laughs> Remember back when uh, Hunter came out? Damn, those were the days. Yeah, I know, right? Um, 
but like and this this brings us to another question is like here being a valkyrie which is a, a point on its own of all this stuff being ripped straight from norse mythology what does a valkyrie mean in this game is it uh godlike that can go between play like worlds and planes or is it um something more mortal or something in between or yeah you make some really dead? interesting comments where she's like uh you know i'm a valkyrie and we met before when you came in to the afterlife which is another just weird point right because we see her during blood runs deep yeah the, the long haul so right she was in the afterlife, so she can obviously she move worlds. between worlds if you look at Norse mythology at what uh, Valkyrie are, they're kind of like, they're not gods, but they kind of are, and they're able to like transcend between worlds. And They refer to Guthix here as the Most High, so it's almost like Guthix is filling in the place of Odin for them. Right, and that completely ignores their, their V mythology, is, is V more like their Thor? Yeah, I don't... Like, there's not much to go on when it comes to how are they related to Guthics. Right. Like, what are they to him? What are What is he... What are they... I don't, I don't know. Right, yeah. Is this, this screams Valkyrie quest, or at least, like, tail, or something, something, something Valkyrie. Yeah, because we know Guthics got the Fremenic from, like, Terragard back in the first age. Right, which we think is after Saradomen abandoned them and they stopped caring about him. Yeah. Because they don't really mention Saradomen ever. Right. Also, that brings to the point that we think they're humans from Terragard and not some other human human colony from other worlds. Well, I mean, at some point, they all came from Terragard. Right. But I think they were directly from Terragard uh, specifically because of the line in uh, Oreb's journal, the Magister, about how he remembers the Terragard afterlife as a frozen lake leading up to a giant mead hall, which resembles, it's not the exact same as the, the Fremnic afterlife we see in Blood Runs Deep, but we also know that the afterlives are created as uh, memories and uh, visions of what the people in it think the afterlife should be. Um, so it could be like their interpretation of what the afterlife from their homeworld was, but on Galenor. Yeah, this is kind of a bit of changing lore that's happened recently, where originally, when all this big like underworld... Right, starting with Missing Presumed Death and moving... Yeah, when it all came out, we were originally told, like, oh, you go to the homeworld, you go to the underworld of the planet that you feel is your home. Right. And this is kind of like shifted away from that, and it's is more, more like of... If you imagine what your home world, underworld was like, it'll be created, but on this world. Right, it more seems like the Fremenic are going to their interpretation of what the Terragard afterlife is in the Gilinor afterlife. So, very... Which I guess doesn't not work, because the original journal was written by a mortal, um, Ferris, but his source was death, so it kind of doesn't yeah. work unless there's like a miscommunication there um uh, what we have what we we can use what we have most currently i guess as what's the current canon yeah it, it just kind of like brings into question like what is ear why can she go between the afterlife and the world that's probably the biggest question here yeah because i think with the old kind of like lore with it we kind of assumed oh well if they're going to the terror guard afterlife she must be like the terror guard death but right and i, I like that but that's obviously like, not yeah. where this is gone it might have been that when this was written because this was written like five months after missing presumed death came out with the book about the underworld maybe so it might have been built off that but we have to reinterpret it now that things have changed no my Belgi came out yeah and this brings to another uh thing here which I think works better because of the the interpretation idea of death is the blood run steep scenes where we go there. Um, yeah, this has always been kind of a point of contention. Is like, why did we go there? If it's the Terragard word one, it makes absolutely no sense. Um, but if it's the 
Gilnar one at least makes sense that we went to the one of the world we're on. It just doesn't make sense of why we went to the one that's an interpretation made by other people. I mean, we do that in Nomad's Elegy between going to the Pandosian one and the, the Limbo one. Um, but how did we like get plopped in there without, unless like death plopped us there because he has an in with ear or something? I don't know. Yeah, it's always seemed like that scene was more of a, hey, look, isn't this cool? More of anything that was actually like, uh, that kind of doesn't really make much sense. So we'll have to get an explanation on that at some point, maybe, if we get like a Valkyrie quest with death involved. I don't know. This this end of all things thing uh, is building up to some some large afterlife involvement. Because another thing Ear mentions is that there's an undead army preparing in the afterlife to help combat against the end of all things. Which, my question with that is how does the dead people help? Because I get in Norse mythology, they like, they like raise up and they fight, I think it's a spirits? Something like spirits. that. But um, how does that work for us? Does like, do the undead actually get released out of the underworld by death for the end of all things? Like go have fun, but come back here by curfew? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It it would make more sense if like the Valkyrie were undead and maybe that, they were the army. Are they some sort of? Per Does the Terror underworld differ so greatly that maybe they have like multiple protectors of the underworld that are the Valkyrie and maybe she tagged along for the Gilinor journey because so many Fremnik came, um, and she's like a a, part, a piece of the the group of Valkyrie that are still mostly on the the Terror Guard afterlife. All good questions that need to be answered. <laughs> I know, that's, that's super theorizing, but it also then brings the thought in of, if we go to Terror Guard, do we need an a Terror Guard afterlife quest like we had Nomad's Elegy? Do we have to do that for every planet to explore their afterlife? I don't know. That, that'd be really time-consuming to make all those. Yeah, I make think... Make them all interesting. I think their underworld of all things have, has gotten like super complicated when you try to break it down, especially as opposed to like any other afterlife that we have. Right. I've ever mentioned. I, I think that we need a, a giant underworld quest series at this point. There's too many questions. Yeah. Especially um, after Elegy. Which, granted, made some really cool concepts, but then it, it, just, like, it showed the concepts, it showed you like a couple of them, and it's like, here's all these other ones you can't look at. Yeah. Um, apparently, the Zerosians don't get one. Does he eat their souls? No one knows. Um, um, I would be very surprised if that was the outcome. I know, but it's like the it's the the implication I get out of it as to why they don't have an afterlife. I don't know. Maybe no one's actually Zerosian. It was all a myth. Another plot point that we think is probably going to happen is avenging V, because okay. after Heroes Welcome, you get some dialogue where. You know, they say they're going to be behind you fighting the dragonkin from now on because they hate them now because they killed V and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where is that going to go forward? What does it have to do with the end of times? Right. That hasn't come up so far with like Suski's Endgame, but would it come up more in uh, the dragonkin quest series we eventually get in seven years? Right. It felt like something that probably should have been referenced right. in Endgame, but never was. If anything, you can have, like, the minimum you could do would be have some new dungeon, have it be somehow Dragonkin involved, make it like a dragon dungeon, and then have, like, some Fremnik people outposting saying that, like, they're investigating or something. Slowly continue it that way. Yeah. But, yeah, this is a plot thread we have to eventually see. No, and even if it's not Dragonkin related, I'd love, like, a, like just an Avenging V. I mean, it has to be a Dragonkin quest related, but, like, a legacy of V quest of like the, the people coming together perhaps on his trading outpost island making the trading outpost again with reuniting the people this would be like a way to finally tie all the nations the lunar isle nation to the everyone else because that is missing even though it's like see like i i kind of disagree with that because i kind of think blood runs deep did that fairly well I, but it's never said there's like they did they, they came together to fight the threat but they're not like I don't know, I think I, I need it to be said more clearly or shown more clearly. I think we just haven't gotten enough from it, uh, like, content that follows Blood Runs, or Blood Runs Deep that 
you know, actually would show that. Right. But the right. interpretation I got out of doing that quest was, okay, finally, after all of this time, all of their issues are finally settled. Mm -hmm. Because Somehow, they even the interview, because yeah. they even figured out like the reasons that they hated the Lunar Clan to begin with was kind of misinterpreted, and you mm -hmm. know we had a bunch of backstory that had to do with that. Yeah, I think I just I'm I'm half like wanting more explanation, and half of it's just like I just want more quests. <laughs> but it's probably bottom priority at this point. Yeah, no, I, I think moving forward we should definitely, like, you know, have them be reunited and just have that be the interpretation of Blood Runs Deep. I feel like that would make it much more simple. And I definitely think you'd have to have them, like, firmly reunited before you start doing an end-of-all-things quest or quest series. Yeah, exactly. Which is something I want to see happen or be started because we are running out of quest lines. Um, they are being concluded at a moderately to slowly pace, um, but it's happening. I think all we have left is like gnomes, elemental workshops, anything else after. I mean, pirates obviously is being done. We have the desert one quest, which will come after all the reworks of the previous ones. Um, yeah, I think that's about all the storylines, which is kind of scary. So we need new ones. We need we need more deaths of chivalry. Um, or some things that do that sort of thing. So I think starting a Fremnik, probably not series, but more like the original quote unquote series was like a bunch of random threads that eventually came together. I think that's a great way to do um, this quest about all these different tribes of people. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see that come back as a, as a new arc of some sorts with the end of all things being kind of the, the capstone to it. Right. And that's my hope for the future of them. Yeah. I think that about concludes it. Yeah, all that rambling off of the wolves came back with no new content attached to them. But <laughs> we didn't talk about it in the past seven years, so why not this year? Right. All right, guys. Well, tell us what you think about uh, the future of the Fremenic down below. Uh, what do you want to see? Do you want to see anything at all? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And until next time, uh, I've been Krondus. That's been Avernic. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.